Before I get into fixing the game from a development standpoint, there is one more issue that needs to be addressed with Activision. As much as I love Terran Treyarch and Infinity War New Assholes, their day will come when I show them how to fix the fucking gameplay. But Activision has one more fuck up they want to stop Call of Duty from sucking more ass than an instructor at an analingus convention. <laughs> Anyway, the next big change that I think needs to happen is something Activision might actually be doing as we speak. They need to add a third developer. While we don't know all the details, this is something that should have been done a long time ago. And I'll address the presence of Neversoft in a few minutes or so, which by the way, doesn't that sound like the greatest porn actor name ever? <laughs> think about that shit, man. Have a last name Neversoft and shit like that. Anyway, man. As we all know, Infinity Ward is a shell of its former self. Treyarch has their heads shoved so far up Bill Gates' ass, they'll be able to tell him he has colon cancer before his doctors do, but replacing them is not the main reason we need a third developer. The real reason we need a third developer is because games are rushed to completion each year. Now, this can be implemented in two ways, both of which help out Infinity Ward and Treyarch reduce the amount of bullshit they sell. I mean, fuck, the only company that sells more bullshit than them is Manure or Us. Right now, each game every year is rushed as we know it. Just look at the typical cycle. A game is released in November, then they spend the next 10 months or so supporting the game. You know, patches, DLC, balance and shit with buffs and nerfs, banning kids, exploiting the game, whatnot, whatever. By August or September, they stop supporting that game and they begin to get to work on the next one. This leaves them about 12 to 13 months to develop the next game, basically one year or so. Unlike a regular software company that may get two to three years, video game developers are getting one year to push out their product. By adding another company to the rotation, you've given your studios the amount of time software companies take to roll out new programs, two full years. You've given studios an additional year to add more content, tighten up storylines, get more community input, give the employees a break and time off to clear their heads, whatever the fuck, then get them back in the studios and we can create the quality we had five years ago. Without getting into the full development cycle of a game, the basics follow any software development cycle. First, you plan the idea or you plot out the game. Second is you implement or begin actual coding for the project. Third, you test the product as you go along to make sure you're not breaking shit, you know what I'm talking about. And finally, in the fourth step, you release the game and continue support afterwards. Now, there are a shitload of steps and details in between that motherfucker, but when it comes to the software development cycle, these are the four phases every single company goes through. Reality is, developers have about one year to do all of this for video games. Now compare that to actual software makers who roll out programs every two to three years or even longer. The two Call of Duty developers are rushed into putting out a new game every single year. So naturally they're cutting corners to meet this insane deadline. And that decision to push these companies to rush the product is the fault of Activision. The studios don't want less and less time each year to develop the product. The studios aren't the ones hyping how Call of Duty is the greatest fucking annual selling franchise. That all comes from crap division. Hell, the whole Infinity War lawsuit two years ago stemmed from Activision withholding money from employees. They wanted to get them to work on Modern Warfare 3 immediately and withheld their bonus payments. Basically, they were holding them up for ransom until they completed their next assignment, which was bullshit. So to fix Activision's absolutely brain dead decision to rush their two main studios, we need to add another studio to the mix. We need to give them more development time so they can add the polish these games need. And there are two ways of doing this, and the most obvious way is to just throw a company right into the rotation. Infinity War and Treyarch get a year off to develop the new game, while this new company gets to create a whole new Call of Duty world. The idea is now all the companies will have more time to create a better product while continuing to release a Call of Duty every single year. Instead of pushing the two studios to push out a game in one year, now they have two full years to develop a game. You'll have Infinity War do one year, Treyarch the next, the third company the next. Plus, by adding this third company, you bring in some fresh ideas to the series and get some new blood on the programming teams. And after all, wouldn't it be nice to see some fresh ideas to the series from an outside source? Wouldn't you like to see some new shit for once instead of both of these companies just copying all their prior ideas? I'm sure other companies could come in and put their stamp on some new innovations instead of just rehashing the same ideas all over again. However, I highly doubt Activision will go for this. Like I said during my beta rant, as long as we keep shoveling $1 billion at the game, there's no reason for Activision to invest any additional money into this bullshit. Why give these companies an additional year to do something? They're already rolling out a product in quicker time that makes money, you know what I'm talking about? Right now, the developers get paid that full year of development living off the profits of their prior product. So imagine if they went two years without putting out a game to make some money. Financially, for Activision, this would cost a shitload of money. As we all know it, Bobby Kotick would rather wipe his ass with a $1,000 bill than give anyone but himself some money. 
at fucking cocksucker, man. Now, right now, there's this Activision studio called Neversoft that I mentioned, and people probably know them from Tony Hawk skateboarding, Guitar Hero, and whatnot. They're being added to the Call of Duty family. Now, there's no confirmation as to how they're being added, but they're coming to the series in some form or another. If I had to take a guess, and this is all just speculation, my guess is they're going to be helping out Infinity Ward do the next game. Sort of how Sledgehammer was brought in the last time. Neversoft Studio is too small itself to actually create a Call of Duty, and they're only around 75 employees. To give you an idea of the other sides of studios, Treyarch is over 200 employees, Infinity Ward's about 100, and Sledgehammer's about 90. So you can see the size that Neversoft has. They really don't have the capability of producing a full Call of Duty game on their own. So that's why I believe they're going to be added with Infinity Ward. But again, that's all speculation and shit. Now, the second idea I have to add a developer, it's a bit more creative. Instead of having Infinity Ward and Treyarch support the game after release, how about this third company takes over all post-production support entirely? Instead of Infinity Ward and Treyarch focusing on fixing the game after the fact and losing those 10 months in building the next game, this new company will come in and take over all the patches, all the DLC, all the bannings, all the balance changes, everything. You know what that does? That gives Infinity Ward and Treyarch 10 more months to prepare the next game. Right now, they only have 12 months to push out the next Call of Duty product. Imagine if they had 20 months, or 21, or 22 months to prepare the next game. Imagine what 10 additional months of testing and innovation could do for a Call of Duty game. And I know what some people are thinking on how this would fail. How on earth would a company just come in and pick up the work of someone else? Why would Treyarch and Infinity Ward agree to this bullshit? Wouldn't a new developer lead to more programming errors since they don't know how Call of Duty works? It's a simple solution. Have this brand new company consist of Treyarch and Infinity Ward employees. Instead of it being in a completely new company like Neversoft or Sledgehammer, Activision could take staff from Treyarch and Infinity Ward, add them to their own unit, and make their own company. Call them Infinity Arc. Call them Trey Ward. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Call them a bunch of assholes. I don't give a shit. Their goal isn't to develop the game before release. Their goal is to work on products after release. These trained programmers should have the ability to support both franchises. They should have the ability to fix both games because you have programmers from both series, from both companies. They can have DLC ideas. They can work on all the new ideas the franchise needs. And as I said, the biggest benefit is the production teams at Infinity War and Treyarch are now freed up to go create the next game. Activision is most likely too short-sighted to see the benefits in all this. All they see is the cost adding up of a new company and keeping these people paid throughout the year. All they see is added costs that will cut into the profit margin and poor Bobby Kotick won't be able to bring home a ten and a half million dollar bonus. It's only going to be ten million dollars because the other half million was used to make a top of the line product. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, asshole. By adding this third company as a support company, they become your source for DLC. Instead of just four map packs for Call of Duty each year, how about eight map packs? How about ten map packs? How about a new map pack each and every other week or each week? It doesn't matter. The possibilities of revenue they could bring into Activision are endless. And the amount of support they provide will show the Call of Duty community that there is a company responsible for handling the game and listening to our communications. And there's no question there's going to be a learning curve, there's going to be growing pains, you know, because obviously they're going to be learning their new roles and shit. But if you give them enough time to find their groove, they're sure to find. I mean, just look at Treyarch. They went from releasing that god-awful garbage called World at War to the slightly less awful piece of shit called Crap Pops 2. <laughs> Now, obviously, it had an improved campaign, new items in multiplayer, future timeline, zombies, you name it. They actually improved the game. I do have to give them credit for that. So if you give this new company that amount of time to improve, just imagine what you could do for this franchise. But like I said, Activision is far too short-sighted to see the benefits of having a dedicated support company. Anyways, this is the last thing that I'm going to be addressing for Activision. The next video... I'm going after Infinity War and Treyarch. Oh, hell yeah, it's time to start swinging below the belt because I'm about to give both of these companies a swift kick in the dick over the bullshit they put us through. Anyways, as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit. And like I said, guys, there are going to be plenty more videos coming up in the Blueprint series because I'm fixing everything in this motherfucker.